Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about updating this plane here from iNav 6.11 to iNav 7. Now I don't fly this a lot. This is the version one, the very original version of the ZOHD Dart XL. They very quickly updated it after getting feedback on a couple of features that weren't great. For example, the uh, quick connectors, the access to get the wings on and off were actually underneath this hook cover, but this cover was held in place in the old days by two screws. I've 3D printed some catches so I can take them off. I've 3D printed this catch here at the front so I could remove the magnet so I could use a compass if I wanted. It has a DJI system in the nose. I'm flying a lot of walks now, as you've probably noticed from the channel. I need to have a plane that I can follow along to get those aerial shots that everyone likes as part of reviews. So and this is a great model for that. So it's probably been set up three, maybe four different times in its life. Now it has a Runcam Thumb Pro in the nose along with the DJI system. It's got a Matex flight controller in the back and it just flies nicely. When these things first came out, everyone freaked out about the price. However, we're paying that for pretty much anything these days. But this had some really cool features. I fitted a folding prop onto the back of mine. The wings come off for easy transport and storage. Things like the vertical stabilizers uh, actually just come undone by the twist of a catch at the bottom. I really hope that ZOHD get back on the horse soon and start bringing out some new things because they really did know how to make some very nice models. Really aimed at those of us that love to fly FPV. So let me go through the entire process I'm about to do with this. Um, because this is on iNav 6.11 and I want to take it to iNav 7, the upgrade process is super simple and that's why I'm making the video. I want to show you how easy it can be. However, if it's more than a couple of versions ago, so maybe if this was iNav 5 and I want to go to iNav 7, I would probably treat it as a new install, blow it away and actually set everything up from scratch. More, that's more about me being able to find all the new funky improvements and features that they've added to iNav in the configurator than it is about getting everything set. However, at the end, and I will reiterate this, I would always treat a model that you have updated like this, where you've copied across the settings, so your modes, your OSD, the configuration file has all been accepted and it's really simple and easy to do, I would still treat it as a maiden flight because you don't know how well that all worked. But let's jump on the bench and I'll actually show you the process and how easy it is. So here is the model currently running an earlier version of iNav. I know that, as I said in the introduction, this is one that I've kind of built to be a chase plane for things like walk snail reviews and stuff like that. So we have the DJI stuff in the front, Runcam Thumb Pro. We have good old, uh, Matek flight controller. So let's go through the process. I'll actually not cut away from this. I'll go through every individual step. Let me plug the flight controller into the computer first, and then let me plug it into the computer. Now, this on the computer is the latest version of configurator. Uh, as I'm recording this anyway, I now have seven. So when I connect, the configurator is only going to let me have a look at the CLI. If I type in version, uh, and hit enter, it'll tell me here that this is running 611, which was the current version when I actually built this thing. However, I might as well update it. I now have seven, so that it's got all the latest and greatest features and bug fixes. Now, what I would do here, there's a couple of options, but personally, I would disconnect and then go on to the configurator releases page. Now this is uh, a link that I'll put in the description. Now I have configurator 6.1, all the versions are listed down here. So I would just download and install them. I tend to keep all the configurators on my laptop here in different folders. So let me start I have configurator 6 and then we can connect to the flight controller and see how it's currently configured because we need to take that back up in order then to do the update. So here in INAV Configurator 6.0, just happens to be the one on the computer, I can now click connect. And because the flight controller and the version of Configurator are the same, everything is going to work. And I can see all of the tabs along the left-hand side. Personally, what I would do at this point is I would just take screenshots of all of the setup. The calibration is gonna be copied across the mixer settings because the mixer is set up slightly differently here. I've got a little bit more weight 
on my roll than on pitch, so I have a better roll authority on this particular model. Uh, as again, I'm going to do a full kind of, I'm going to revisit this with modern flight control software in it as a, a kind of a bit of a fun thing to do. Outputs will notice that the middle channel positions have been trimmed. This has been flown, uh, not massively, I'll be honest, but it has been flown before. So we can see the middle channel positions. That's probably up elevator just a smidgen. The ports are configured with the DJI FPV VTX stuff on UART1, the GPS is on UART4, etc. Personally, I would go through every single one of these tabs, just make a note of how they were all set up. And then once you've kind of got that in your head and you've taken screenshots and saved them to your computer, go into the CLI. And what we're going to do here is we're going to type default and hit enter. Now this file here is just text. We can actually save it to a file and let's put it on the desktop. I would keep it in a place that's going to be useful. Call it something that you'll remember and we'll hit enter. Now the cool thing is, is we can actually just look at this file. So if I just double click and open this, then we can see here all of the pieces. And again, I have a video uh, here, which actually goes through how you read a default file, because there's some really interesting stuff in here. This is the servo mix stuff. This is how the outputs are configured with the middle channel positions. These are the features that I've got turned on, how the beepers configured, how the serial ports are set up, how the LEDs are done, whether or not we have any adjustments, the OSD layout, that is something you can copy and paste from model to model to have a consistent layout, which is great. Then we have all this stuff of how everything is set up and how the PIDs are done as well, including things like the cruise throttle and other pieces. So this is really important. The only thing that I tend to do is I just delete the save out the bottom and then we're going to press Control A, Control C, and that's going to keep that all in memory. Now what we need to do is to go back into the latest version of Configurator. Now again, the latest version of Configurator as I'm recording this is 7.01, so let me restart that. And here back in 7.01, again, if I connect, all it's going to do is just going to give me the CLI connection, and I'm not really interested in that. If ever you get a situation like this where it's struggling to connect, I would just unplug the flight controller from the computer, just count to five, stick it back in, and you should find that when it boots back up, you can connect again. Sometimes going with different versions and keep connecting can cause things to go a bit weird. So now we're back in, we're back, we can only do the CLI stuff again. So what we're going to do then is we'll disconnect from here, we'll go into the firmware flasher and we'll update this flight controller with the latest and greatest version. Now the cool thing is it has auto selected the target that it needs, it's read it from the flight controller already. If you're using an older version of iNav you might not get that feature, but if you're using a pretty modern version, Configurator is really smart and will figure it out. We'll choose the latest and greatest version as I'm recording this, make sure that full chip arrays is on, We'll load the firmware from the servers and then we'll click on flash firmware and it's going to do the standard stuff. It's going to erase it, then it's going to flash it. Again, if it doesn't go into DFU mode, check the link down below that shows you how to fix that. I would either use something like Zadig or something like the Immersion RC driver fixer. Once it's erased, then it'll go and flash. Again, don't unplug or touch anything with this. Let's just wait for the whole thing to finish. Again, I'm not going to edit this. This is exactly how long it takes. In reality, it's much quicker than this because I'm not talking about it. But in a moment, you'll see that we can just copy all of that default into this new configuration and all of those settings that we had, all of the things about the trimming, the positions, the modes, the OSD layout, what modes and features we have turned on, all of that stuff is magically going to appear. So it's gonna finish verifying, it's gonna reboot. We'll give it a moment for the flight controller to finish. There's only one thing we're gonna to have to do, which is click on connect and tell it that it's in an airplane uh, without a tail. This is just a, a wing model. So we'll click on that. It'll reboot and set those defaults. 
And that is the only bit of setup that we're going to need to do with one little exception. I'll show you that in a moment. Again, this is something that if you keep your models relatively up to date by checking the release notes in things like the INAV configuration guide, uh, you will be able to keep updated with a minimum of fuss. If it's more than a couple of versions out, personally, I just tend to blow the model away and start from scratch. So here we are, we have it all set. So now to copy everything across, I'm gonna go into the CLI, I'm gonna press Control V and hit Enter. And that is going to copy that diff all that we copied from the previous version into INAV. And that is setting all of these things for me automatically. And what you're watching for here is that there are no red errors. And if there are red errors, then actually it won't finish and save automatically. It'll warn you that there are errors need doing. However, we didn't get a single red error in here. Everything's gone beautifully. So I'm just at the bottom going to type save and hit enter. That will now save those parameters to the flight controller. And any ones that did appear red, I would just double check those, have a look in the INAV configuration guide just to see what's changed. But if you're keeping it reasonably up to date, you will be good. Now the GPS is gonna go red, there we go. But now my accelerometer calibration has come across. My mixer is now set up. So it's exactly the same as it was. However, in INAV7, we have all this cool timer stuff that we didn't have before. There's my uneven mixes that I like. In the outputs, again, those middle channel positions are all saved. This is literally the only thing that I have to do here is enable stop motors on low throttle. That's probably gonna be fixed in later versions. But I would just save and reboot this. And what I would do is just go through each of the tabs in Configurator one by one, just confirming that the way it's set everything up is still the way that you want it. The big ones for me are going to be how the ports are configured. So there's my DJI VTX, there's my GPS, how my modes are set up and they have come across beautifully and also how my OSD is laid out as well. And surprise, surprise, that's come across beautifully too. So now we've done all that, we can just disconnect, get rid of the connection to the computer and unplug it. So there you have it, it isn't particularly hard. And to be honest, if I wasn't recording it, it would have probably taken me all of five minutes. And the longest part of that would have been me waiting for the update to happen. So that is how simple it can be. Now, I am a big fan of the school of thought of if it works, don't bugger about with it. Should you update your models regularly? Personally, if they're flying really well, I've got them dialed in and I love the way that they perform and all the things that I want it to do, it does really well. There is a school of thought that says leave that alone. However, if you do keep everything up to date, it does mean that it's relatively easy to incrementally update iLab like I've just shown. However, when big changes happen, it still means that you have to play about. But as I said in the introduction, personally, I would do this if it's just one version out of date. If it's more than one, I, if it had been something like iNav 5 or 5.1, then I personally would have probably blown it away and set it up from scratch and basically treated the first flight again as a real maiden and just double tested everything, gone up to do with the trimming of the servos and the way that I've shown. Again, I put my link down to how I maiden iNav planes below if you haven't seen that already. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.